ready to get started. Classic, beautiful hymn. Thank you. Our service this morning begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. Today we celebrate the ninth Sunday of our Pentecost season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. <clears throat> Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our scriptures. Jacob, because you are my kinsman, 
Should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? <clears throat> now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Christmas. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. <clears throat> then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. <coughs> but in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife. The word of the Lord. Remaining seated, let us say together selected verses from Psalm number 105 found in your service leaflet. <clears throat> together, give thanks to the Lord in all of understanding. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory to his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Serve the Lord in his strength. Continue to seek his face. Bring me the marvels of his son, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Oh, offspring of the Okay. 
gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes, indeed, intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are all being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord.
deeds of grace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. An additional title to this sermon today might also be Christianity 1102. <laughs> Advanced Christianity. I'm going to deviate a little bit, uh, uh, and we might have a bit of a Bible study uh, today during today's sermon, but I think it's very important. In our gospel reading today, we find a teaching section in the Gospel of Matthew where there is a group of parables. Often parables are used in pairs, so we find the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven is having similar themes or messages. These two parables join a grouping of other parables in the gospel known as the kingdom of God parables. These parables are like little windows that gives us certain views on the mystery of the kingdom of God. It gives us a glimpse of both what it is and also what it is not. Parables tell us three things. It first tells us something about who God is. Secondly, about his relationship with us. And then thirdly, how we might be in relationship with God and our neighbors. The parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven tell us something about what the kingdom of God is not. These two parables may be interpreted in a very challenging and different perspective than the usual heartwarming story of, of about how tiny seeds of faith can grow into something significant, and of course they can, or the symbolism of the homey image of sweet-smelling bread made from a small amount of yeast. Now, warning. This is not your Sunday school version of the interpretation of these parables. For the Israelites of Jesus' time, there was a tension between the reality of everyday life and the mythical vision of the coming of a new kingdom. A new kingdom led by the Messiah that would introduce a glorious new age of universal peace and with God's chosen people of Israel at the head of all the nations. This is what the Israelites thought. From the heyday of national power, prestige, and pride during the reigns of King David and King Solomon, Israel had been on a downhill slide for several centuries. Its kingdoms had been conquered and divided several times. For the Israelites of Jesus' time, the kingdom of God had strong connections of power, triumph, and holiness. The enemy would be defeated, in this case, this current case, Rome, would be defeated and goodness would prevail. Now the cultural symbol of this myth for centuries was the great cedars of Lebanon. These cedars were massive. They grew straight up for two to three hundred feet or more tall. Their branches would shade many different birds. This cedar image represented a triumphant Israel, a strong Israel, deeply embedded in the cultural conditioning of the Jewish people. The kingdom of God as a nation would be the greatest of all nations, just as the great cedar of Lebanon was the greatest of all trees. This was almost embedded in their DNA, cultural DNA. Now mind you, in the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus uses a radically different image that could be interpreted as even a ridicule of the cedar image 
that the Pharisees had long held onto. Jesus was saying, the kingdom of God is really like a mustard seed. A mustard seed. The proverbial smallest and most insignificant of all seeds. The mustard seed actually grows into a prolific bush with branches that also provide shade, though limited. But furthermore, the scripture reading says that the mustard seeds were planted in the field, which is actually translated in a garden. Now in Jewish law, you know, they had many. In Jewish law, there were strict rules about what could be planted in a garden because they were all about wrong and right, pure, unpure, clean, uncle unclean. And so it was considered an unclean plant for the garden or the family field. So you see, here we have Jesus presenting the kingdom of God as one of the smallest seeds that grows into an unclean or illegal bush. The mustard seed image is almost a subversive one compared to all the grandiose ideas about what the kingdom of God was supposed to be when it finally arrived. The Israelites had expectations that the future kingdom would rescue them from the Roman oppression with a grand and triumphant liberation. What did Jesus mean by this nearly opposite image of the mustard seed and its unclean status instead of this great mythical image of the cedar of Lebanon. Jesus is suggesting that God is not necessarily going to rescue or even intervene on some uh, uh, in some huge level some dramatic level in God's greatest works are done not always on a grandiose level. In fact, the greatest work may not be done in a cathedral or a cardinal parish, but maybe in little old St. Philip. The kingdom of God can be found in the now. This is the, uh, one of the themes. The kingdom of God can be found in the here and now and in the so-called in insignificance of everyday life. The kingdom of God is manifested in ordinary life and how we live in it. It is where people actually live their lives and it is accessible to everyone. The parable also affirms that grace is indeed like a mustard seed sown in us, like the smallest seed that grows, but perhaps with modest but sure growth in steady formation. Doesn't that describe most of us, steady formation? Some more shaky than others. Now, let's move to the parable of leaven. The parable of the leaven is a parallel story to the mustard seed parable. And again, it would have been equally sub subversive and radical to the Jewish ears, to the hearers and its leaders. In the ancient Israelite world, leaven or yeast was considered unclean. It was an archetype of corruption. It was a symbol of the unholy, the profane, the mundane, every day. Not holy. Yet Jesus tells them the kingdom of God is like leaven. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like leaven. How can the kingdom of God be like leaven? 
the archetype of corruption when it is supposed to be holy, good, and triumphant. Jesus' parable challenges the ancient Jews and challenges us as to our assumptions and our preoccupations of what is evil and what is good and where goodness can be found. It's another theme of judgment like last Sunday. The challenge not to judge evil from good or where goodness can be found is also illustrated in the parable of the Good Samaritan. There are many connections with these parables. If you recall in the parable of the Good Samaritan who was labeled unclean, Samaritans were corrupt, untouchables, and yet the Samaritan turned out to be of goodness and compassion in this story. <clears throat> Who can judge? The Roman Pope said something about that the, not too long ago. Who can judge? Jesus often identified himself with the outcast of society by sharing a meal with them, walking with them, staying in their homes. Apparently the kingdom of God was there in the middle of all of that corruption. Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God may be in the most unexpected places, especially in those marginalized places and with marginalized people. Like in the inner city of our own city of Memphis, where the Emmanuel Center seeks to be an outpost or an embassy of the kingdom of God in a poor, troubled, chaotic, and sometimes even violent environment. Or like the poverty of spirit that we find every day in our own neighborhoods, in our workplace, and among the people that we know or meet. Jesus is calling us to look for the kingdom of God in the here and now, in everyday life, not in the magnificent or the triumphant always, and in the most unexpected places. Jesus is telling us to look for the kingdom of God in our disappointments, in our failures, within our problems our weaknesses, and even in the tragedies of life we find ourselves in today. And the solution, good folks, is not getting away from our problems or being rescued from them. The kingdom of God is manifested by our attitude toward the problems, not by their disappearance. The kingdom of God can be realized by knowing that God is present with us and he is sowing seeds of grace within us throughout our lives, wherever we are. In our ordinary lives, in ordinary places, and in ordinary circumstances. mustard seed or leaven. I think this is challenging stuff. I'm going to tell you, I never had one Sunday school teacher to tell me that the mustard seed analogy was radical. Not one time did I ever heard that leaven was a radical sense. They were, they were good stories, and they are good stories. And they're stories that we need to continue to tell our children. And they are true. It's no accident that Jesus used these examples that were radically different, that turned the world upside down, as he often did. God grant us eyes to see, 
ears to hear, and especially hearts that can be transformed. May it be so with us, and perhaps especially today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand together and say the Nicene Creed found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Nicene Creed is the outline of our Christian faith. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the part of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Mount's Father. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. Who we believe in the Holy Spirit, who the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge the one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Using the prayers of the people found in your service leaflet, let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. <clears throat> Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, <coughs> and give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, 
Phoebe, our bishop, bishop, and Father Terry, our priest, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, our, the eyes of all people to behold thy, thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor Elena, Jane, Karen, the High family, Jordan, Robin, Joey, Larry, Robert, Bob, John Henry, Monica, the Weatherly family, Holly, Peter, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. <clears throat> We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear, especially Marilyn Real and Catherine Hyde. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace that to follow the good examples of the blessed Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, and Saint Philip, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Commission on Ministry. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the Village Mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We pray for peace among all nations. Yes, Lord. We pray for peace for our own nation. Yes. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Hawley, Rachel Miller, and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Tom and Paula Veslowski in honor of their first wedding anniversary. <clears throat> Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Jim Knight, Tina Stevens, Richard Tetlow, and Margaret Brooks. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Bob and Mary Keeley. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for the country of Ukraine. Pray for those that are suffering from the current inclement weather. We pray for those victims and those suffering from violence in our nation and throughout the world. We give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. 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 Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. 
Our confession can be found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer. 331. As we confess together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and declare our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time have previously and our goodness, by the Lord, word and deed against thy divine majesty, but provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous to us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith to turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace. I'm glad you're here. Peace, everyone. that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So good to worship here. It's so good to see you all here. We are especially thankful for our guests and our visitors here today. We're glad you're here helping us worship today. Thank you for being a part of us. We hope that you'll fill out a visitor's card and uh, the, the usher will be glad to give you what I call one of our little goodie bags that has more information about uh, St. Philip and the cards is just to help us to help you uh, during this time. A few announcements. Remember our healing service on Wednesdays at 1210. Uh, what a sweet service that is uh, as we pray for our needs and the needs of others. We lift up our prayer list to the Lord, and it's a, a beautiful midweek Eucharist. So please come and join us for that service. Continue our ongoing ministries. We have more than these, but uh, our ongoing ministries, a Thistle and Bee, uh, a collection box, uh, that ministry uh, that helps those victims of uh, human trafficking. Also, the prescription bottle ministry, uh, talking about cup overflowing. Uh, somebody said we must have a lot of sick folks here. <laughs> uh, but continue to bring your empty prescription bottles because they will be cleaned and used for, uh, for areas in this own country and also other countries that uh, don't have medicine bottles. Their pills are wrapped in paper or leaves. And so this is a very important ministry, I believe. 
Also, remember our food bank, uh, an ever need in this city, and the manor house. Uh, I, I, I think uh, their, their latest wish list is backpacks, uh, uh, just not any like serious uh, off-country backpacks, but just urban backpacks. And so you can also include those uh, in the Manor House box, which is our ministry uh, to the homeless. Well, if you missed our men's club breakfast during the summer, you missed it. <laughs> this morning was the last uh, men's club breakfast, but what a great time we had. Uh, and we'll continue our thanks about this, but a special thanks to all of those uh, men and women who contributed to preparing uh, those meals throughout our summer. Uh, what a blessing it was to us uh, and uh, the fellowship that we enjoyed with one another. Now we can go on our diets. <laughs> those Paul Bunyan breakfasts, woo! Uh, but thank you everyone for participating in that and I'm already looking forward to next summer mm -hmm. but yeah this is our last sun, uh, Sunday so if you show up we might fix you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> <laughs> a reminder uh, that our veterans medallion ceremony will uh, will happen right after this service uh, during our um, coffee hour or refreshment hour. Uh, it's a very brief service, but it's to honor those veterans. And a uh, special thanks to Sam Perrin, who really did the legwork. It was his idea. Uh, we thought it was wonderful. And he brought back uh, official medallions of those who turned their names in uh, for our loved ones uh, who served in our country. So that's immediately following this service. You uh, may have heard the name Marilyn Real in The Departed. Uh, I got a call late last night from her daughter saying that she had passed away. Uh, that was not a total surprise. She had been in ill health. Um, but I had a chance to talk to her on Wednesday. She called me. Uh, she was coherent at, at that time and we had a wonderful conversation. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I've known Marilyn for a long time. Uh, she was assigned to me as my secretary at St. John's, right out of seminary. And uh, we became uh, friends fast. And uh, of course, she eventually came over to St. Philip and was our parish administrator for many years until she, uh, until she got ill. But uh, she moved to Texas to be with her son. And uh, it's my understanding that she'll be coming back here for her funeral services. Uh, of course, no plans as of yet. But keep the family in your prayers, especially uh, her daughter Katie, who was unable to travel to see her mom before she passed away. Are there any other announcements that we might have? How about birthday celebrations? Do we have any birthdays? Oh, I know we do. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness, what a motley crew. <laughs> Oh God, our times are always in your hands. Look with favor as we pray on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in your wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son. Bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Glad you're celebrating with us. How about anniversaries? Do we have any anniversary celebrations? Yes. We're busy bees today. <laughs> anniversaries? Okay, yeah, that's what we said. Dear folks, let's pray. Gracious God, Father of all, we give thanks for another year of these lives shared in human love and in your love that never fails. Bless this couple in all that is yet to come, confirming and strengthening in them the vows which they have made to one another in your name. Keep them faithful until they must part in death and bring them together at last into eternal life. Amen. 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 Now bless you with this holy oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now bless you with this holy oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Congratulations. So how many years, Bob? This is a test. 42. Wow. Okay. Good for you. They deserve a medal, don't they? <laughs> and a halo. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit has made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Praise and thanksgiving. 
most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. 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 that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Just a word of invitation to our guests and our visitors. We're so glad that you're here. If you're a baptized Christian, this is your table, regardless of uh, your denomination. Uh, but please feel welcome here uh, to have the Lord's Supper.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven for me. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
could not be here today, and for all of those that we have prayed for, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep them into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Become what you have received. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, God, we most heartily thank thee, for thou hast seen us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, that we are very members and corporate
Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.